everyone and finally we are back and this time we're gonna talk to a friend of mine somebody that i met a few years ago a really cool talented dude that comes from from france but now he's living in canada and he's gonna tell us everything about it and let's welcome my friend rafael lacoste what up bro hey <laughs> did, did i spell your name right lacoste Lacoste, Lacoste. Like, the, like the shirt. <laughs> Lacoste. The Chinese will say Raphael Lacoste, but uh, no. <laughs> Raphael Lacoste. Raphael Lacoste. You, yeah. What? Where do you? Where are you from, Raphael? From fr in France, of course. But where are you from? From France. <laughs> I'm from Bordeaux. It's actually the wine country. That's this good. I feel the whole France is a wine country, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's more expensive in the north. So if you want to get like cheap, very good cheap wine, you have to go to Bordeaux. So yeah, so in the Southwest. Let, let me introduce this French guy, this French cool dude that I met in Sao Paulo a few years ago. So Raphael, uh, Raphael is a bunch of things. Raphael is an amazing artist, amazing illustrator. He is a concept artist for all the Assassin's Creed or most of them, all the good ones. Not all, not all. <laughs> A couple. <laughs> and Raphael works now at uh, Ubisoft Montreal in Canada. So Raphael, did you always work in Canada with Ubisoft or you started in France? Uh, actually, uh, I started in France, but not for Ubisoft. I started at uh, Callisto. It was a, a small French company based in Bordeaux. And then uh, it was during the, the crisis. We had a big multimedia crisis in France in two, 2002, I think. So I was contacted by Ubisoft Montreal and it was a great opportunity because the ship was really going down. And it was a massive wreck. So I could escape just at, at you know, on time. And I had, a, it was like my first leap of faith and I, I went to Montreal in Canada. So it was like a, a big step. I was young, I was 20, 26, I think. And I was offered to work on a Prince of Persia, uh, Sense of Time. So you see, I'm old. Uh, this is yeah. this is so crazy because at the time you were working at Ubisoft doing Prince of Persia, I was yeah. in my home. I was probably 15, 14, oh, okay. starting to play with Photoshop and and going crazy with yeah. Prince of Persia. Maybe taking I could be, I could be your snapshots, dad, uh, almost. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if you're like really like uh, going to action with 14, 15. But man, uh, you are, I'm not going to tell you age, but I, I, I wonder, I think you are something like 10, 11 years older than me. And yeah. I know you don't look like you, you, you're that old, but I mean, compared to yeah. me, but when you which see is crazy in, in HD, you know, you, you will see, like I have some, uh, some wrinkles and, uh, ah, come white, on. Uh... <laughs> so last time, last time I had a conversation with Raphael, we were in a hotel room with Alex Solis uh Alberto, Alberto Monti, Rafael yep. Valaperti, yep. and uh Alex Solis' wife and my current wife as well. By You're the right. time she You're was right. my fiance, and now, now like, she's my wife. Is it like uh four for all? Oh, congratulations. Time goes by, time goes by. That was like four years ago. Or maybe there was ago. I think I think it was like three years ago, maybe 2015, yeah. 2015, yeah. 2014 uh yeah and it's been ages and and i've been looking forward to see you back in brazil and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit but now cool. rafael i want to ask you some things and the first thing is we know prince of persia we know assassin's creed and we know you've been involved in all the concepts and all the the aesthetics of the game and my first question is for both prince of persia and assassin's creed you have all these cultures uh, portrayed in the game, all, all different ages, different countries. And the first question that I have to you is, do you travel a lot to do your games? Do you actually go to, let's say, Egypt to do Assassin's Creed Origins? So uh, for every game, we try to travel and uh, to get as much inspiration as possible. Uh, in the case of Black Flag, we went, uh, it was, it was, you know, we had to go to the Caribbean. We had to do a trip to Cuba. Oh, uh, such a bummer. Uh, you know. You need to go all the way to Caribbean. Yeah, to Caribbean. <laughs> and 
you know, to go on the islands and uh, to travel here. So yeah, you, you have to be, if you want to create a world that is interesting and uh, looks plausible, you, you need to know the place. And uh, I think it's, it's quite important. Uh, it was the same when we created the for um, uh, Revelation, we recreated the Constantinople. So uh, we went to Istanbul two times. Uh, we spent time in the Great Bazaar. We went to the Topkapi Palace. And uh, we spent a long time in the city to make sure that we could bring back a lot of memories, but also photos, reference textures, and, and also sound. You know, we, we try to, to, to tape even like details to get as much inspiration as possible. Uh, for Origins, we worked with the historians, uh, with a guy who is like really amazing. He spent uh, a long time, like 10 years in, um, in Egypt, and he was also an illustrator. So he is, uh, at, at the same time, he is a watercolor artist, painter, and also historian. That was the best experience we had to work with him because he could give us like not only like inspiration on like the not only on the facts uh, and historical facts, but also on the artistic interpretation of the past. So that was extremely inspiring. That's so crazy. Do do you feel inside like yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Egypt, I'm gonna go Caribbean, and and that's work and uh, yeah. and and yeah, that's yeah, part of your life. Uh, <laughs> it's, but yeah, yeah, but it's. Uh, it's 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 super interesting, but at the same time, it's uh, it's also not like going on vacation. You, you know, you have to wake up super early. Uh, you you have like a super busy schedule. You you have to make sure that every every day you spend there, you spend there is going to be like a day you use as a material for work. So it's almost like when you work on a movie, you you have to go on a set and you have to to take as much as many photos as reference. You you need to recreate the matte paintings or digital backgrounds, for instance. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's not vacation. I would say like uh, going on vacation is something different. But it's always uh, very inspiring, and also meeting people there, uh, spending time with the people. It's a it's a good way to to have like a good connection with the core team, and uh, you know to to be involved in the creative process. I, I totally get them, and and every time that I go New York or Vancouver, San Francisco, everybody feels like, man, you have such a great job, you can travel to all those places. But the truth is, you have such a tight schedule. Yeah. Monday pre pro meeting. Uh, Tuesday something yeah. else and and it's uh, by the time you you can enjoy a little bit of the city you are mm -hmm. so tired that you just yeah. want to go want to go bed yeah exactly and you're like jet lag all the time so yeah Effectively. so how are you feeling about coming back to Brazil it's uh, it's really cool uh, again I won't have the time to to travel a lot there but uh, I I, I really like the, the, the city and the, the vibe of it. Uh, I don't know all the city because it's for sure it's so huge that you can't know all the city. But uh, the last time when I took the, um, the taxi a couple of times, we, we took the cab to go to some, uh, some beautiful place, to the park and even to the airport. And I took as many photos as possible with my phone because I think all these buildings with orange colors, yellow colors, and a lot of graffitis. And it looks like the gravity scene is really intense <laughs> in Sao Paulo, like all the graffitis and the walls. So it's uh, it's also inspiring to see all this huge, massive city, and uh, it's uh, it's scary at the same time, and also very inspiring when you like to create like locations and places. So I think I'm going I'm going to use this reference maybe for the workshop and maybe some uh, to create some uh, some piece of art and uh, maybe some environment design. Yeah, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo is, a, is a great city, it's a huge city, and that's why we have the, the conference happening there. Uh, although we come from Rio, but the conference yeah. makes more sense to be in Sao Paulo. It's the biggest city in Brazil. And yeah. Sao Paulo, uh, I don't know if you remember that movie called Blindness, or, uh, or even the, the, the game Max Payne, uh, yeah. the, the third or the fourth, they base in Sao Paulo, and, and it looks... Yeah. It looks so crazy it, to see part of your, um, you know, a city from your country portraying a game, mm -hmm. uh, just just like we had Rio back in the day with uh, CS, yeah. Counter, yeah. Counter Strike. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, I have I have another question for you, yeah. and that that comes from one of the illustrators at Life Farm. His name is Diego, and Diego asks okay. if uh, he knows that you made matte paintings for movies as well and yeah. he he wants to know the difference from matte painting for a game or for a movie and which movies you worked on okay uh so it's pretty different because when you work for the movie you you need to to have a, a technical setup that will help to really track 
uh, the image in the background and you have to to fill you know all the green screens so it's uh, it's a bit more technical you don't really do matte painting for games what you would do maybe is uh, you would create like a, a quick time vr of a location and uh, it would be like for an immersion of a place but now we all almost like do everything in 3d we model everything we do the skies in, in you know like with like different procedural techniques and uh, we have fractals we create like a time of day with is systemic with a pbr lighting so we don't have actually like matte paintings for games like we used to do like in the past but now we don't we don't make matte paintings for games uh, but when you look for a movie you know it's all about like more technical setups like uh, camera projections and uh, do all the the, the setup in hd and it's, Pretty different. I know that now it's uh, it's becoming different. Like uh, in in film, they tend to use more and more 3D assets, so less and less 2D backgrounds. It's more and more like 3D assets, almost like a high end level art uh, for for the movies because you want to move the camera everywhere and it has to be like highly digital rendered. So it's getting like as close as the level art we have now. Man, I, I really love your concepts. I'm not saying that just just for saying. Uh, every time that I see something from you, e even your recent uh, work, you posted some spaceships, and I was like, "That's mm -hmm. not Rafael Lacoste mm -hmm. that you used to see every day." But y y still, you can see a level of detail and still see the brush strokes at the same time, which is crazy mm -hmm. because sometimes your illustration feels so simple, but at the same time so detailed. And mm -hmm. I know you create these amazing um, backgrounds and, and concept arts for for games like Prince of Persia or mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed. Uh, when you do that for a movie, is, is it a different thinking in a way that do you need to have separate layers? Uh, do, you, do you know how to animate them or you have no. someone else doing that for you? What, what's your workflow when you work for a concept art for a game or maybe like a concept art for a movie or a map paint for a movie? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when I was working in the film industry, I was working with the uh, Rodeo FX and after I did also some freelance uh, for a couple of films like uh, jo uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, uh, Jupiter Ascending, uh, Terminator Salvation, Death Race, like a couple of movies in uh, like, uh, like uh, eight to ten years ago. Um, but I found it was very technical because I had to make sure that everything was uh, Photo real. Um, I couldn't use any brush strokes. It had to be like a mask revealing some parts of photos and textures, and it has to be like in CG uh, modeled. I would be working with the um, the compositor, so I would be always working on you know on flame, and we would separate all the layers. So I would spend like maybe two weeks up to two months on just one image, which is very different um, from concept art when you you can do like a piece of art in like two three hours. So you can do like two, three different pieces of arts in a day. So that's pretty different. Uh, and I, I felt like it was uh, it was a great challenge. I learned a lot, you know, when I was working for the film industry, uh, working for the VFX. But eventually, this is why I came back to video games because I felt that I was missing this creative freedom and being able to be like more high level and be able to have to feel, you know, have the brush strokes, uh, give more like a gesture into the paintings and be like more like a high level in the direction. So it's like what you see live now. It's uh, you know you see like shitty uh, <laughs> etching with a pencil, and then I'm trying to add some a gradient of colors. And I have some photos on the side. I would take some photos and I use the photos as inspiration for the for the mood, for the for the for the atmospheric depth. Then I cut out uh, the silhouette and I focus really more on environment design, uh, silhouette and lighting and atmosphere. Uh, when I was working for the film, this is just a, a small tiny part of the production because all the rest would be how to make this for the real and i don't want to see it's a painting and when you'd say you don't want to see it's a painting you're almost insulting the artist because <laughs> i want that to look like a painting so eventually this is why uh, i moved back to to video games and i'm also fighting in the video game industry to make sure that we're not making only uh, physically based lighting and hyper real environments we're making uh you know like immersion in a place where you want to spend time but also you want to travel it's a journey it has to be fantastic it has to be magical even if it's realistic so that's and it uh, is and yeah, it is thanks. uh since since prince of persia uh i remember uh that's so crazy man uh that i'm interviewing the concept artists of a game that i used to play and one of my favorite games because i would 
not even play sometimes. I would just leave it and watch the sun rising and sun setting, or maybe like frame the, the, the image in a way that I could take screenshots and just look at it. And it always felt so good and so real. And, and I, I, I feel that I always could appreciate the, mm -hmm. the, the, work, the work you do because you are the one creating, uh, suggesting either way, uh, these, atmospheric backgrounds and, and, and environments and the scale of the character to the environment. And I, I always felt that, but back then I wasn't even aware that there was somebody behind that creating illustrations before uh, going to everything else, which is amazing and wow. crazy at the same time. And, and I, I, I'm a real fan, man, of, of the work you guys do, you and uh, Rafael Grassetti in other mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Or even or even Chris Costa in in some yeah. completely different yeah. uh, setup as they well. Are, from, uh, are they from uh, from São Paulo? They yeah, uh, Chris Costa comes from the south of Brazil. Okay, okay. okay. Grassetti comes from São Paulo. Okay, okay. And cool. and uh, we'll and, see them. Uh, yeah, for sure. And so so many others. And uh, you mentioned something funny that when you create your concept, somebody come and say make it for real and it's almost like a uh insult because that that the the artwork is the illustration is not yeah. necessarily the final piece but uh i guess that i i was never very able with illustration like like yourself no. but i'm on the other side i i can take something you did and match mm -hmm. as real as possible yeah. and, and so yeah it was, i see what you mean it's it's i was uh i was kidding a little bit i was just saying that uh when when you do something that is uh, illustrative, you know, interesting, um, it's not. There's no way why we should uh, delete the that the, all the crafting you you have inside it, like all the the aspect that makes it look interesting on on the artistic side. So making something, taking something from the real world and making exactly the same in three D, I don't find the interest when you create games. Uh, you could see the interest when you make a movie, when you have to, to do a VFX on breaking an element, uh, on destroying a building, for instance. It's different. This, this kind of stuff is different. When you create a game, when you want to create a world, uh, there's no way for me to recreate the exact same world you see outside. Because when you play this game, you want to escape from the world and you want to do and to, to do creative things, but also to explore a new place. So that's why. Uh, I love GTA because they take uh, Los Angeles and they create Los Santos, which is like a, a caricature, and it's more, it's a bit more cartoony, and more vibrant and uh, and contrasted. And uh, I feel that it's really how they they catch the vibe of the place and they create something very like super interesting and inspiring with that. Even if it's realistic, it's it's a different take on the real world. You know, you see what Wait, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. It makes everything way more artistic than if you just match uh what it actually looks like it's almost yeah. like you're, you're trying to portray the best day of yeah. that of that city let's think about exactly. the best day the city ever had yeah. and, and and let's not portray 100 percent realistic but let's yeah. let's uh have a have a, a more emotional exactly look to it. that's that's exactly that's the point that's uh, the emotional elements you need to to bring my friend jack from from life farm he's asking if uh he knows that you pretty much did so many things in your life you did map painting for movies also for uh, uh concept art for prince of persia and so on all the assassin's creed and he's asking if you still have a challenge that you want to pursue something that you still want to i want to be something or i want to do yeah. something else sometimes and and what are your goals considering you you did so much in in such a in such a long yeah. career you already yeah. have yeah that's a, a very good question it's on time on my midlife crisis it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i would say like uh, we have different challenges you know in our life and i would say like the first challenge for me was uh, after ac1 my challenge was like clearly to learn how to work in the film industry that was like a dream so I went to Rodeo FX and they, they hired me as a matte painter, illustrator. Uh, before that, I was uh, doing artistic direction for games, so it was very different. So well, that was a great challenge. After that, I came back to Ubisoft because I was feeling I, I was needing more like creative freedom. So I, I've been working as an art director on uh, 
AC Black Flag, you know, the video game with the Paris mm -hmm. uh, AC4 mm -hmm. and the Revelation and the Origins more recently, uh, but also in charge of the franchise. So everything that, you know, touched the movies and maybe some comics, uh, statues, uh, all this stuff could be also um, a challenge for me. And uh, now what I would say is uh, I want to take more time for my personal stuff and try to be better, you know, co you know continuing painting, illustrating, and doing stuff maybe for like personal projects. Like uh, I did this book, uh, uh, Worlds. Uh, it's like 15 years of illustrations, uh, personal artwork, but also uh, book covers, uh, illustration for film. Um, so it's really, I would say the best of all my illustration I did like in 15 years. And now I'm working on a new book, uh, only uh, a book of drawings. So only sketches, black and white, ink and paper. So having like more personal uh, challenge like this is that's else. so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Make, make sure make sure you bring some to Brazil. If I have them printed on time, I I'll will have be sure to, to bring them. Uh, I'll but be the first cool. one to buy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Man, you have so many fans in Brazil. Uh, are you aware of all the fans you have, maybe with Instagram or Facebook? Do you get like messages and and people from everywhere? Um, I have yeah, that's, following your work. It's really cool because you, you get to connect with a lot of people and uh, even uh, I love you know, all these social networks because it always it allows us to really meet uh, people from all over the world. Uh, for instance, I met uh, uh, one of my best friend now, uh, Ian McHugh. He's uh, an incredible artist. Uh, he used to work on. You must know him. He's super famous. Um, and we met uh, in the CTN. Um, uh, I met uh, Carla Ortiz uh, in Montreal two times. Uh, James Gurney, all these guys were well, like massive inspiration for me, and you get the chance to meet them because of the social networks and you know connections, but also like uh, students and uh, people from all over the world. So it's cool when you when you travel to get the opportunity to meet uh, all these people. And, uh, do you do you actually get to represent Ubisoft for uh, you know launching games and stuff? Do you get to travel to to launch the games or in like marketing campaigns or or more like uh, like like speaking for festivals? Yes, yeah, so uh, that's something I try to do because I want uh, to give uh, the spotlight to the work done by the artists because uh, very often when you have uh, video game conventions or even when you when you have press tours for the games um, it's really more focused on the narrative and game design and uh, we don't speak that much about like the creative uh, uh, aspect of all the artistic challenge so that's why I'm trying to do that even if I'm not like I'm not super comfortable doing like uh, the PR and uh, doing any press tours uh, but I'm trying to do that for the team and uh, to, to give the voice uh, of the art department uh, of, uh, of Assassin's Creed of the project. I think it's how, how many how many artists do you work with? Well, how big is your team? Yeah, I mean, the artists, just, just, uh, the, art, just the artists. Team. Oh, okay, so uh, I would say like uh, the best numbers we have for concept art are like three people, including me. <laughs> so we have a very small team for illustration. Uh, then we would have, uh, um maximum maybe four maybe five people for the characters uh we'll get uh, maybe 12 level artists for the environment uh a couple of models i would say like maybe like 30 to 40 people and uh if you say worldwide because we work also with singapore we work with sofia in bulgaria uh shanghai so it's growing like maybe up to like maybe 90 people uh, at the end of the production Something like that. That's so crazy because when you think about a, a game like Assassin's Creed, it feels so big, so epic, yeah. so such a long game uh, that you'd think that, I don't know, 300 artists, 400 artists work on that because it's yeah. so, so much work. But you also work on the games for years, right? Yeah, so we we spend between two years and uh, four years. Uh, it depends on uh, the challenge, technical challenge we have. But I'm not including all the animators. We have all the level designer who will be helping the level artists to, to craft uh, the level design of the, the maps. Uh, people in charge of the textures, people in charge of, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I would say like a satellite positions also. Uh, a lot of engineers, uh, tons of game designers. We have like, it's, it's pretty huge, I would say like uh, for sure. I have a question from James Sheban and James asking okay. for your advice, um, how to get, 
pretty much how to get in the competitive, crazy, fun world of games. Um, sorry for the spelling he's saying, but love your work. <laughs> okay, do you see do you see the question in live? I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's, it's showing like, it's showing on the screen. <laughs> okay, all this. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's why for getting in the company crazy from one of the games industry. I like that. Uh, there's many ways uh, for sure. I would say like game schools. If you if you if you are in Montreal, for sure it's it's great because in Montreal they have game school and they have uh, teachers from the industry and they help you to 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 know how, really how to to create a very good workflow in your personal work, but also how to work with people because it's very important to be able to to work with a team, not only like uh, you as an artist. Um, if you're not in a game school, then having a, a, an amazing portfolio and making sure that you you ping the right people and you ping again the right people and you try you know to send again your portfolio and improve it. Um, I would say that's also like a, there's many ways to, to to get in the industry. I would. How say, how, how was it for you? How how did you start? I, I had a, I had a very long and painful path. <laughs> <Do you laughs> Do you want to hear all a the... little bit? A little okay. bit. Did, did, did you start at a bank as well? No, have, no I didn't. We have a lot of. <laughs> I've been in, in a like I would say the more like traditional fine art um, uh, field at the beginning. So I went to the finance school in Bordeaux. It was very boring because we are doing uh, conceptual art, but you know the conceptual like more, more contemporary art, like video performance and photos. And you see, like when you have to talk for one hour. And what you show is like basically like a, a video of uh, someone performing. You, you, you see what I mean? Like contemporary art, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that, that's and, that's a, that's a good question because yeah. uh, talking about modern art and contemporary art. Yeah. Toma is asking which modern or traditional artist uh, does he look up to? Which artist inspires him? Also, does he have any great book recommendation? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I can't. Uh, it's like there's so many, so many, so names. many questions. So so many names. Yeah, I, I would say uh, traditional. I've been uh, looking at uh, traditional painters for for a long time. Uh, one of my biggest inspiration uh, for nature was uh, Gaspar David Friedrich. Is uh, is a German uh, painter, uh, but also uh, Albert Bierstadt. Uh, he is is a German painter. Uh, all these guys painting a landscape in the 19th century were, were, were like a, a huge inspiration. Uh, more recently, uh, for sure, someone like Ian McHugh, uh, someone like Spath, uh, also trying to simplify my, my work as much as possible because I used to do very detailed illustrations. And I don't know if you get the chance to see my latest illustration I post like maybe yesterday on Instagram, but it's uh, it's done in Procreate. So basically what I do uh, when I'm on a, on a trip or, or journey or when I'm going outside, I take some photos with my phone and I use the, the photo as an inspiration to create a world. And I would paint everything uh, with the traditional brushes in Procreate. So I can't cheat. I don't use any photo bashing, no 3D elements. It's a pure painting. And oh yeah, you have it. You have it there. So so that's the windmill you have on, on the left here. Oh, it's, it's pretty tiny, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, if yeah, you, oh, yes, I have it on, on on art station as well. Maybe you can see it in art station. You can you can zoom uh, on art station. Uh, so I'm trying to to use more the brush stroke to simplify the shapes, to simplify the colors, the values, to make sure that we really focus on what is important: the mood, uh, color palette, uh, shape, shape design, atmosphere. Uh, no photo bashing, no 3D. But I love also using, you know, to use the photos and use 3D elements. Like uh, if you if you move on the art station portfolio, you will be able to see also uh, spaceships and modeling in 3D and using like, uh, you know, some kid bashing. Like yeah, uh, you see the spider or this. Yeah, this one also. So I love this. Uh, oh, so thanks. Did you, thanks. Did you model it's, any of these? And no, no, it's, it's, it's pure pure kid bashing from Star Wars. I'm doing a lot of uh, paint over. I'm doing all the lighting in 3D Max. Uh, painting uh, the background using some photo reference. So yeah, it's a mix of different things, yeah, a lot of different things. Uh, so I like to do this kind of stuff, but it takes me two days to do an illustration like that. But the one you see with the windmill on the left will be uh, two, three hours on Procreate on iPad. So it's a good exercise. It's a good challenge. I like to do, to do also this kind of stuff. So this is why I love uh, what uh, uh, Spath is doing because it's, uh, it's a great challenge to show, okay, how to make a, 
a very interesting world, but with very simple shapes and simple, simple strokes. And talking about Procreate, you mentioned that on your on your uh, keynote session in Brazil at Unhigh Conference, you're going to be doing some Procreate live, right? Yeah, I could uh, show some process. <laughs> uh, I would like to 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 stream that to see uh, maybe if you can show some uh, some uh, process in Procreate. That, that, yeah. That's what I call experience. You know, yeah. some some yeah. artists would, would do that like in a, a terrible in <laughs> In you a four hours workshop, but this guy in one hour is gonna is gonna have his <laughs> keynote session painting live. So what I would like to do is maybe uh, showing maybe uh, first the process, the traditional inspiration. So going through like some uh, inspirational image uh, where where I'm coming from. So showing maybe the basics. So I have a keynote for that, and then I will be doing some uh, live paintings, showing some tools I have in Photoshop with my custom shapes. Uh, going through also uh, my workflow in Photoshop and also in Procreate. So and that comes yeah. down to a very important question, which is what brush to use. Aha! Uh -huh. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, my so friend round, Jay, round uh, shape, one hundred percent opacity, okay. no pressure. Okay. <laughs> you see now, Raphael. Now you have uh, Raphael's uh, favorite brush. And I have a question from my friend, uh, uh, João Marcos Brito and okay. JM, JM. So JM is asking um, where Rafael seeks for inspiration for his personal images. Okay, so inspiration is coming from uh, life, from like your personal journeys. It could be from the place where you live. So the last time I was in uh, Sao Paulo, when I took, I told you when I took the cab to the airport, I took many photos because I was really feeling like a fish out of water when I saw all these wires and cables and spaghettis, um, you know, stuck in the air like this. I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and also these massive buildings and uh, also uh, orange chimneys with uh, a lot of smog in the distance and uh, maybe some also like uh, uh, shanty towns in the background. So that was very contrasted, interesting. So that's inspiration. I would take photos and I would use that as inspiration. Uh, but not only that, I would also uh, use painters, traditional painters as inspiration. Um, many painters like uh, I was talking about, like, you know, some guy like uh, Moebius, uh, you know, he was doing uh, comics. Scruton is uh, from Belgium, he's also doing uh, painting comics. Uh, traditional painters like uh, um, Russian painters, uh, German painters from the 19th century. Uh, Tom Tenery, he's more, you know, contemporary artist. Theo Prince is more like contemporary uh, artist. But a lot of different stuff uh, could be could be giving inspiration. I think for you, have... it's going outside. You know, taking photos in the streets and uh, going to the museum also is uh, is great. I'm gonna have to go back this live and 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 write down all the names you're mentioning because I won't be able to remember them now. Oh, uh, Franklin, but I'll, Franklin I'll definitely do that. I have a couple. <laughs> That's really good. It's really nice to see what are the artists that you admire. Uh, in my case, you're one of them. Uh, but it's it's really cool when when ask, asking guys like you that have such a such a long and and great career, and and I'm sure you you have some great artists that sometimes don't get enough attention or a spotlight, but yeah. they they're just as good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say like uh, even if you have the experience and you have uh, lots of followers, uh, if you're a very good and talented guy, uh, you would be always in the dark, you know, always questioning yourself. If you start to be like, uh, okay, I'm I'm the best, uh, I know what I'm doing, and I, I don't question myself, I know exactly what I'm, what are my ideas, and I. I it's it's wrong, you know. There, there's something wrong. Something wrong. So when you see uh, like uh, like a famous artist, and I met uh, lots of famous artists, and they, they look like they, they they have like doubts all the time. Uh, they have anxiety. <laughs> they they have always like they always question themselves, and that's that's a sign of you know they they still need to 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 be challenged, and that's that's great. Um. Uh, do you do you like uh, the work of like Dylan Cole, or yeah, I know I know him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, I love his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really like his ideas. Um, it, 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 he has kind of a 
a similar feeling to like uh, that's that's me right uh my mm. perception I, i feel that uh you and him you mm. have some things in common like okay. uh maybe maybe everything is really epic and huge and and the, the mm. scale and the bright yeah. colors and and um oh i see what you mean i see what you mean you know what yeah. i mean you know what i mean i see yeah. i see some similarities even though the oh, techniques cool. are completely different he he uses a lot of uh 3d in his illustrations it's a good comparison uh, it's a fair comparison <laughs> no yeah that's that's just me trying I'm to think <laughs> the, the artists that i admire and and why uh i like them in the first place uh my friend diego is asking if you play games often and uh and, and that that's a similar question of uh my other friend jack had before which is do, do you get enough time to play your games so <laughs> good question <laughs> uh, it depends uh i um so i have so i, I have this full-time job so you know making games all the time like you know all the week is like filled fill up hours of playing the game and you know making a game then you go home i have two kids and i love my kids so i want to spend some time with them uh, in the weekends also we, we like to do stuff so i don't play that much video games i'm not like a hardcore gamer at all But uh, I'm starting to play God of War. I really want to play that game. It looks stunning. Uh, I've been playing uh, AC Assassin's Creed Origins for 120 hours at home uh, because I really enjoyed the game. And that's, um, it's a good sign because when you work for like four years on a game and it's a very difficult experience because uh, it's long and you get a lot of challenge. You, you have to work with people. Uh, and you get some conflict, it's always like a, a massive challenge to, to, to build such a huge game. Uh, but you still have pleasure to play that game, it's a good sign, because I really enjoy playing AC Origins. Uh, I, love, I love Assassin's Creed, and every time that I missed one game because I'm working too much, that, that's on my back end, reminding me that I need to keep on playing, because I've been following this storyline for, for such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see what happens. And um, I, I love when you had uh, Da Vinci and uh, yeah. famous painters and famous mm -hmm. characters. I, I love the game. And, and just as yourself, I don't have kids yet, but I feel kind yeah. of the same. Uh, running two companies and uh, one event, oh, yeah. oh, I, I, I feel like going nuts. And I, I wish yeah. I had more time to play to play games. Yeah. God, God of War was one that I, that I said, yeah. stop the machines, yeah. I'm playing this yeah. game or sometimes dark souls because i like yeah. i like that yeah. that feeling of losing and overcoming <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. and i really like that But, game uh, it's 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 starting to be different uh because we used to make games you could finish in 10 hours and you know very good game you could play for a weekend now uh, if you play a game you can play the game for one two months and this is where it's starting it's starting to be difficult for parents or people that are like super busy at work and they want to to relax in a different way also i i personally i like to go out i like to spend time in nature i like to draw and so i have a very tiny little time to play games yeah and uh that that comes down to a question that my friend uh carlos asked which is uh with your free time how do you refresh your mind and 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 keep keep on fresh and also uh if you also draw on your free time uh, i'm yeah. i i think i know the answer already. Yeah. yeah yeah so so that's my my next challenge uh, to make a book of sketch so yeah i'm drawing a lot uh it's a 68 uh, pages book so i have a lot of uh lot of illustration to show you uh it's all black and white pure traditional uh, sketches so yeah It's going to, to be out soon, I hope. I, I just need to find the printer. When I find the printer, I'll make sure to... Uh, if, I, if I can have that on time, I will try to bring some copies in Sao Paulo. Oh, that, that'll, be, that'll be really good. I'll be the yeah. first one to buy. I, yeah. I have, my friend uh, Combat is asking if you ever thought about teaching what you know. Yeah, good question again. So, you, do you actually do it or, or you uh, ever thought I, about it? I've been doing it for uh, six years. I was uh, teaching uh, in Montreal uh, at the university. I was uh, teaching a diploma of environment design. Um, it's a school, it's a national uh, center of animation and design in Montreal. It's, uh, it's a very good school for film and uh, also uh, video games. It's a university degree. Uh, but uh, I was feeling uh, it was very challenging at the beginning. Uh, I, I, 
I had to do live painting, like uh, I should be doing also in the workshop. Uh, I, I had to do like every Monday a live painting, um, do a follow up on all the personal work of the students, but also um, do like a um, mentorship for their like all their personal IPs and projects. So it was a great challenge and also very inspiring. But uh, I was feeling I was missing some time for myself to work on personal stuff. So I've been uh, off uh, teaching like for like six months now. And I think I'm not going back to teaching soon. I need more time. Yeah, man, you, you do a lot of things. And uh, I know I know you work. Oh, how, how many games did you work in your life? I know Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed and all the Assassin's Creed out there. And uh, did you ever work on other games? Uh, I would say uh, no, no, no. Uh, actually, we, we, no, I work on the, on a couple of IP uh, which were not released. So, no, no, mainly uh, Prince of Persia and uh, Assassin's Creed. So, uh, it's about 10 games. I uh, didn't count all of them, but. Uh, and uh, how, do you remember how old did you start on on, uh, on uh, Prince of Persia? Is that like a 20 years ago? I don't remember. Uh, Prince of Persia, it was uh, 17 years ago, I think. Yeah, it's a long time ago. And uh, and you mean the first one, uh, Sands of Time? The Sands of Time, yeah. So yeah, I was. Oh, that was. I was, that was so good. Uh, thanks. And, and then after, with uh, I've been working on a uh, on the cutscene because I wanted to learn how to to do more like storytelling. So I work on the the cinematic and cutscene because we were doing like all pre rendered stuff for uh, Two Thrones, uh, Warrior Within, all these uh, all these guys. And I, I I remember there was a huge leap from. Um, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time to the second one. Uh, yeah. It really felt, yes, yeah, Sands of Time was, yeah, that's really cool. But the second one, which I don't remember the name now. Uh, uh, Fire had, Within. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. All the, the graphics had a, such a big leap from the first one. And what I want to ask you is, do you get to be an art director not only for the aesthetics, but also for the ideas of the game. Maybe you say, hey guys, next Assassin's Creed, Japan. How does that <laughs> sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds very good. Do, but, do, uh, do, do they, uh, Ubisoft get you involved in that process as well yeah, of br brainstorming we, new ideas? So we have like, uh, we brainstorm. Where we, as a team, we have, uh, we have like our personal taste and we want to work on some you know, different kind of settings. Uh, we, you know, for instance, we, we really wanted to, to, to recreate ancient Egypt and we really wanted to, to create uh, uh, all these massive and incredible monuments of uh, you know, the ancient, uh, ancient times. So that was um, inspiration from the team, but also we listened to the fans because the fans have expectation that they really want us you know, to explore like different locations. Like, uh, like, uh, they're like super excited by Japan, but also by you know the Mayans and a lot of different like settings and time era. So it's a mix, it's a balance between you know what the team wants to do, what the fans would be expecting, and what we want to, to work on. Because we'll be working on that for like two, three, four years. So we have to be motivated and interested by the That's true. And, the and I'm period. sure Ubisoft runs lots of uh, market research. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure yeah, you have also some. We, we run that and we we know what are the expectations. So it's uh, for sure. It's a uh, but we were talking between a uh, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and uh, the other one. The the, the difference. Uh... Uh, I think it was. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we talk about so many so many things yeah. right now. Uh, yeah, that, uh, I think it was Evil Within or something like that. I don't oh, know. Okay. Uh, and there was a wrath wrath of time. I, I don't I don't yeah. really recall yeah. the names. Uh, that that's yeah. something like you said, seventeen years ago. <laughs> yeah, it was seventeen years ago. Yeah. I have I have a question from uh, Leonardo. Leonardo is asking, do you think that is valid to send your folio to a company, even if you feel that you still have to improve your art? That's a tricky question because you're always improving, right? And uh, yeah. can't, and he's also saying he, he can wait to see your workshop at a high conference. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. Uh, that's a good question because uh, it's good to be always uh, seeking for challenge and. To, to, to find a way to improve your stuff. Uh, but what I see very often when I do like portfolio reviews, I would say almost all the time, um, 
I see very interesting concept, uh, very good uh, high level sketches. And as soon as I see a render, uh, when I see like a more like polished version of the high level ID, it starts to be like rigid and stiff and not interesting. So for instance, you have like a composition research for characters, silhouettes, and then you see the final rendered image and it looks super stiff. The silhouette is not interesting anymore. You lose all the dynamic. Uh, so it, it's very hard to be able to keep the energy of the idea of um, the high level intention and bring that to the next level in a highly detailed and rendered image. I would say also, I prefer when it's not too detailed, when it's more, it shows more like the ideas, the design choices uh, for the environments and also the characters. So it's better when you really know what you'd like to do. If you want to do characters, stick to that. When you want to do environments, maybe you focus more on environments. So make sure that you really showcase what you love and what you, you're good at. I think it's pretty important. And what's your favorite Assassin's Creed game? I mean, your favorite version? Oh, oh I would say uh, I would say Origins, the last one. Origins. Yeah, I yeah. really want to play Origins, Origins yeah, you, because you I always felt like they needed to do Assassin's Creed in Egypt. So many yeah, things yeah. have happened there. And uh, and also think now about maybe something in China, Mongolia, something yeah, of, about the the uh, Genghis Khan kind of stuff. Maybe the the samurais. That would be epic. That would be epic. That would be epic. And I, I I'm 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 looking to your face and 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 see if that's you might if that's poker face. If that's close. If that's <laughs> close to what's gonna happen. Uh, if you could if you could say let's say like five options of of eras or countries that you like to do assassin's I'm creed not, i'm not allowed to say that they're going to fire me okay no i mean just like personally <laughs> as an artist well, like where, where we yeah oh, where would you I like would to, like, to well, go? i would like to go oh there's so many uh, so many things we could go in uh, in so many places uh you know the mayans uh have this interesting you know cultural clash maybe uh in um in these locations, all these ancient cultures, uh, China would be amazing. Japan would be amazing as well. You were talking about Genghis Khan and Mongolia also. I would see like the AC with a with an eagle and a hunting. Yeah, yeah, hunting that would, foxes. That, <laughs> I, I really like that show called Marco Polo. Yeah, it you was know, amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. It's uh, all the photography is incredible. That's one. Yeah, and, and and it's really nice to see productions coming from that. Uh, Chinese Asia yeah. uh, environment because it's so different. I think it's the huge, the biggest uh, cultural clash we can have yeah. when you compare uh, the 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 countries from from the left side to the to the right side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, it's a shame they they stop the production. I think they they stop after the second season. They cancel. Yeah, they cancel it. Yeah, but uh, it was amazing, and even the acting was good. Uh, all the environments were amazing. Do Do you think about having something like uh, Assassin's Creed from the future, like like uh, time travel, something crazy like that? I don't know. I'm just so, like yeah, brain, I, I brainstorming know. crazy here. Yeah, I don't know because uh, it's uh, it's it's not like traveling in the future. I think this brand, the the spine of the the brand, is more about uh, traveling. It's always the past. The past telling so, yeah, the story. The future is something. That is more like for different kind of franchise, like Cyberpunk or Cyberpunk or you know, different kind Cyber, of franchise. Cyberpunk would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the I'm Assassin's Creed through. from the present, and yeah, uh, yeah. They, they have a lot of uh, present stuff as well, right? When when yeah, um, yeah, they have that. They have that yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, okay, another question, and that's that's from me. Like, okay. uh, do you have like a, a a contract that you need to work on Assassin's Creed, or there are other games, other ideas you'd like to work on? Uh, like even at Ubisoft, do mm -hmm. you do you have like plans to work on different games, or or are you really like in this uh, long relationship with Assassin's Creed because you've done it so well for such a long time? Uh, oh. We, we we keep like uh, being like super busy working on a uh, on a uh, on the franchise because uh, working on uh, on the main AAA games is already something very demanding. Uh, but it's cool because it's always a new challenge. Uh, you saw like we we made a like it's a almost like a pirate game. It's not it's not an Assassin's Creed game. You know, AC Four was a uh, Black Flag was uh, almost like a pirate game, and then we have this game 
you know, happening in uh, in London uh, for syndicates uh, during uh, the Industrial Revolution is completely different. So yes, the spine, the name, the title is the same, but when you create, when you build the world, it's always a new a new challenge. It's almost making like a, a new IP, uh, even if like there's there are a lot of connection in the gameplay, the controls. It says a bit the same, but we create uh, really new games. And Origins is completely different from the other ones. It's a pretty new experience. And uh, we're working also on uh, some iOS games, small, smaller like games on the AP. So I mean, I'm mainly working on uh, on the franchise, yeah, for sure. And then on my personal stuff, uh, sketches, art book, and uh, book covers sometime. Uh, I remember that the first uh, Assassin's Creed had the even the Prince of Persia had the same feel of Paco movements, and uh, yeah. and and I think Paco is a, is a French. Um, yeah. I, I I don't I don't want to say sport. I don't know how they call that, but yeah, uh, I, it, that feeling that you could just run, and mm -hmm. then you always find a way to keep on going throughout the the environment. And it's good yeah. that from game to game you can keep that engine always evolving. Yeah. And, and you still know the controls, but every game is so different. The storyline's different. Uh, yeah. Even even the way things move around the, the environment. And mm -hmm. I love the way you have uh, the weather changing all the time. Yeah, yeah. So what, what you try to do now is uh, giving like more like uh, organic uh, opportunities to, to explore the world. So we can, in Origins, we can climb all the cliff, we can climb on some trees, we, you can climb on the buildings, but also on, on the rocks. And it's it looks very natural, very organic. And for the time of day, we also want to give the opportunity to the player to see amazing, magical moments with the feeling of change. Every biome will have different moments and different color palette, different density in the atmosphere. So you have this feeling of journey and a feel of change all the time, from the, the white desert to the black desert to the the swamp of the Nile Delta to the mountains of uh, uh, Libyan Plateau. So it's very diversified and pretty huge. So you can just spend your time taking photos with the photo mode and uh, enjoy the world. And that's something also really cool because uh, I know we have now like almost like 69 millions of photo taken by the players. So it's, uh, it's pretty huge and it shows that people really enjoy the world and spend time in the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't lying when I said that I would just keep on looking to Prince of Persia, take some shots because yeah. every shot was so unique and so so pretty. And and the weather changes it all. Mm. Uh I feel that maybe GTA was was one of the first to, to oh, play yeah. with the weather. I don't I don't I don't it's, really it's, remember. It's amazing. Yeah I love I love uh, what they did with the time of day. And what about your favorite uh movies? I mean the ones the ones you've been involved creating the concepts and what was your favorite? Uh, the favorite uh, I've been working on, or the favorites? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the ones you 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 were proud of, like I don't know, maybe Terminator or the ones you you were proud uh, of. The team I was with. happy with Terminator in terms of visual effects, but also uh, I was happy with the uh, Jupiter Ascending. Uh, even if I I was really involved in the pre conception, so the the stuff I did was not literally used in the final uh, film. But I'm in the credits, which is amazing for me because I've been working just during the concept, the early conception of the of the movie, uh, for like a three or four months. But it was very short. But I was I'm still in the credits. Where when I've been working on all the films for a longer time, but I'm not in the credits. Uh, so I was very happy uh, about that. I also, I like to work on uh, Immortals, Immortal 2011. It's a Tarzan sign movie. He did uh, the fall. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, unique auto movie. Uh, very interesting. And uh, I know that you you be coming to Brazil in two months, and uh, you be speaking at one hour for one hour in yeah. in the, in the main stage. But you are also gonna be giving a four hours workshop, which is yeah. crazy. And I'm mad that I'm gonna be on stage because I wish okay. I could be on your workshop and uh, I want to <laughs> know what what are your plans uh, what are you thinking for the workshop are you going to be giving tips workflows painting live showing well, what are your plans uh, I'm going to dance uh play some music and <laughs> no I'm not doing like uh Alex Alex <laughs> I'm not doing the same no I will be uh first I would be uh, uh it has to be a communication we have to be it has to be interactive so I, I hope people will ask me questions 
and uh, stop me and uh, eventually ask advice I know, on their image. Uh, what we could do is spending some, uh, like uh, maybe the first two hours on the basics. Uh, I'm going through my keynotes and I will be doing uh, some uh, video live process. Then maybe we have a pause and then after we can also do uh, some like uh, visual, you know, um, portfolio reviews and feedback, you know, give some feedback on the art and uh, maybe give some uh, some tips to the artists because it has to be more interactive. I, I don't think it has to be like the, you know, the masterclass when you sit and you just listen to, to the guy. I think it has to be more interactive. So we'll see how we split the time and uh, what's the best for the people. But I, I'm really open to to have like a time frame for, uh, you know, reviews and uh, live feedback. So when you give some feedback, also all the people can listen and interact. So I think it's uh, also interesting. I'm so excited, man, because uh, this is going to be the first time you give any workshops in Brazil, right? Yeah. Yeah. In Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's so crazy because because it's so cheap. I mean, we, we made so many workshops so we could have more people with a cheap mm. price. So nobody mm. would have that excuse of saying, no, it's so expensive. I cannot mm. go like people be able to watch live the concept art from uh, Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia and so many movies paying uh, less than, I don't know, in dollars would be not even a hundred bucks for mm -hmm. four hours workshop. Okay. And, I, and I, I'm just it saying that be because it, it, it's, uh, it, it's almost like, I don't know when Rafael is going to come back to Brazil. So uh, this is a really special chance that people will have to either for artists that are starting and they don't know what they're gonna do with their lives if, if they want to do movies or games or whatever and uh and for illustrators they're already working with mm -hmm. in in the industry it doesn't matter which industry i'm sure uh any industry that uses illustration it's gonna they're gonna be able to get some tips from you sure <laughs> and, uh, and all these people huh i'm eager to see all these people Man, it's gonna be crazy. We we're gonna have we're gonna have seven hundred people in the main stage, and uh, two hundred seats for the workshops. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and for the folks out there that still wanna get uh, the tickets for Raphael's workshop, uh, you still can find them. And it's uh, on the website. And I'm gonna show you right now, right here at Unhide Conference. Dot com. I have to say this because uh, this is really unique and have so many artists like yourself and Chris Costa and even Rafael Grossetti, uh, so many talented artists giving workshops. We're going to have 15 workshops. It's so crazy. We're going to have three, 30 speakers, three beer talks, 15 workshops, six mm -hmm. welcome battles, and three open bar parties which so is going to be a lot of action <laughs> a lot of things to do at the same time and i want to i want to show uh where people can find your workshop right here and even for the people that don't want to go to the conference they still could go only for the workshop because it's a separate thing mm -hmm. so yeah because if you go f to all the workshops you don't even gonna have the time to go to the conference so it's a you you, you need to have them mm -hmm. separately mm -hmm. and uh and and here you can see uh rafael rafael's video and all the work he did and also you can split the payment in 10 times no 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 extra taxes not anything uh in brazil we have that you can like split wow. okay the payment okay which makes everything so much easier i need so to with, move, i need to move in brazil so with, with less than five bucks a month people can can get your workshop man okay it's almost like choosing should i get this extra beer or go to Rafael Lacoste's workshop. And you can go yeah. to my workshop and have a beer with me. Exactly, because it's free. That's a really good point. Okay. We're gonna have we're gonna have free point. beer. We're gonna have free beer, free Red Bulls, even free food. We're gonna have a lot of free things in okay. there. Okay, amazing. I need that. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So cool. uh our live session is coming to an end, unfortunately. And uh and uh, I really want to thank you, Rafael, for uh, I guess thank you too accepting you for the my advice for both the live session and the conference as well. And uh, I was really happy. You were one of the first artists that I thought 
and I was like, I know that Rafael came to Brazil before, but he was such a cool dude, and uh, and I want to bring him back because uh, it's it's really easy to find uh, talented artists, but when they also good people and and uh, uh, interesting people and an open person, because I know sometimes you might get a lot of attention, a lot of people want to talk to you, and and uh, you don't have enough lifetime for that. But it, I always felt that we had a, a, a I would say, a easy, easy going relationship yeah. uh, back in, in Sao Paulo with Rafael and everybody in that crazy hotel room. Yeah, yeah. So we do the workshop in the hotel room. We're gonna do the same. We, we're pretty okay. much booking <laughs> the, the, the whole hotel for us. Okay, That's perfect. Because it had, it's just too many people. Je, uh, really? Grassetti is coming with his family. Chris Costa is coming okay. with his family. Chris Costa is coming to Brazil after 10 years without okay. Okay. without coming here. Uh, his Portuguese is even getting a little bit rusty. Okay, 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 okay. I see. I can't imagine that. So, Rafael, I'm gonna cool. leave you. I'm gonna leave you to the crowd, and uh, so you can uh, say bye and um, and yes. finish this live. So, yes. thanks once again, and uh, and see you soon. See you soon, guys. See you in November. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to finish this.